Hello Year 12s and welcome to this video on Consumer Affairs Victoria. There are four things that you need to do while you're watching this video. The first thing is to take the very best Cornell notes that you can. The second thing is to use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video to take notes. Use the rewind function if you need to go back over any information contained in this video. The third thing that you need to do is to have your vocabulary sheets open in front of you so that you can write into your vocabulary sheets the meanings of key terms or of any other words that you may be unfamiliar with. And the fourth thing that you need to do is have your summary books open in front of you. As we go through this video, I will give you some guidance as to what you should include in your summary books. I have separately provided you with a table that summarises much of the important information that is contained in this video. You should supplement this table with any additional information from this video that you think is useful and then include this table in your summary books. Once you've finished watching this video, make sure that you read the pages from the textbook referred to on this slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then include that information in your Cornell notes. On this slide, I've set out the two learning intentions for this video. Make sure that you write these learning intentions in your Cornell notes. The first learning intention is that you should be able to describe the purposes of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. The second learning intention is that you should be able to discuss the appropriateness of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. In class, we'll also be doing a number of learning activities which will help you to achieve these learning intentions. In this video, we are looking at one type of dispute resolution body that resolves civil disputes. This body is Consumer Affairs Victoria. Remember that dispute resolution bodies are different from dispute resolution methods. Dispute resolution methods are ways of resolving civil disputes and different dispute resolution bodies use different dispute resolution methods. Consumer Affairs Victoria is a dispute resolution body that uses conciliation as its dispute resolution method for resolving civil disputes. You must read any SAC or exam question carefully to see whether it is referring to a dispute resolution method or a dispute resolution body. This is because it makes no sense to compare dispute resolution methods with dispute resolution bodies. It only makes sense to compare the different dispute resolution methods amongst themselves or the different dispute resolution bodies amongst themselves. So, for example, you would not compare conciliation with Consumer Affairs Victoria, but you could compare conciliation with another dispute resolution method like arbitration. Or you could compare Consumer Affairs Victoria with another dispute resolution body, such as the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal or the courts. Consumer Affairs Victoria is Victoria's Consumer Affairs Regulator. It is a government agency that offers quick, free and easily accessible dispute resolution services for civil disputes where a complaint is made by a consumer against a supplier or by a residential tenant against a landlord. Look down the left hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term Consumer Affairs Victoria and write this definition in there. In an exam or SAC question, if you're referring to Consumer Affairs Victoria, you can abbreviate it to CAV, providing that in your answer where you first refer to Consumer Affairs Victoria, you write its name out in full and then include the letters CAV in brackets after that name. Our first learning intention is that you should be able to describe the purposes of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. 
Insofar as resolving civil disputes is concerned, then the main purpose of Consumer Affairs Victoria is to offer quick, free and easily accessible dispute resolution services to consumers and residential tenants. These dispute resolution services are aimed at assisting the parties to a dispute, that is, the consumer and the supplier, or the tenant and the landlord, to resolve their dispute by agreement. In the rest of this video, we'll look at how Consumer Affairs Victoria achieves this purpose. Our second learning intention requires you to be able to discuss the appropriateness of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. In discussing whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is an appropriate dispute resolution body for resolving a particular civil dispute, there are three factors that you need to consider. In summary, Consumer Affairs Victoria will be an appropriate body for resolving a civil dispute if, first, the dispute is within Consumer Affairs Victoria's jurisdiction, second, the dispute is likely to settle, and third, there is no better way to resolve the dispute. We'll look at these three factors in more detail in a moment. On this slide, I've set out a table that you need to include in your summary books. This table sets out each of the factors I've just outlined in the left-hand column. You will then need to describe the relevance of each of these factors in more detail in the right-hand column. Please make sure that you fill out this table as we work our way through these slides. The first factor that you need to consider in deciding whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is an appropriate dispute resolution body to resolve a particular civil dispute is whether that civil dispute is within the jurisdiction of Consumer Affairs Victoria. That is, whether Consumer Affairs Victoria has the power to deal with that dispute. The jurisdiction of Consumer Affairs Victoria is set out in various Victorian statutes, and so Consumer Affairs Victoria can't assist in resolving a dispute unless jurisdiction to do that has been given to Consumer Affairs Victoria by one of those statutes. There are two principal kinds of civil disputes that Consumer Affairs Victoria has jurisdiction over. The first is disputes between consumers and suppliers of goods and services where the amount paid for those goods or services is $100,000 or less. In such a case, a consumer, that is, the purchaser of the goods or services, can request Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist them to resolve a dispute that the consumer has with the supplier of those goods or services. For example, a consumer might have a dispute with a supplier of goods, such as where JB Hi-Fi sells a faulty laptop to the consumer. Or a consumer might have a dispute with a supplier of services, such as where Jim's mowing has damaged the consumer's fence while removing a tree for the consumer. Or a consumer might have a dispute with the supplier of a car, such as where a Toyota dealer sells an unroadworthy second-hand car to the consumer. The second main kind of dispute that Consumer Affairs Victoria has jurisdiction over is disputes between tenants and landlords in relation to residential properties. In such a case, a tenant, that is, someone who rents a house, flat, room in a rooming house or caravan in a caravan park, can request Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist them to resolve a dispute that they have with their landlord, that is, the person who rents them that house, flat, room or caravan site. For example, a tenant might have a dispute with their landlord about repairs to the house that they are renting, or they might have a dispute with their landlord about an increase in the rent for that house. There are other kinds of disputes that Consumer Affairs Victoria deals with, but these are the ones that you need to know. Note, as I've said, that 
only a consumer or a tenant can apply to Consumer Affairs Victoria to provide assistance to resolve these kinds of disputes. Consumer Affairs Victoria does not assist in resolving disputes where the complainant is a supplier or a landlord. It is also important to remember that Consumer Affairs Victoria cannot force the supplier or landlord to participate in the dispute resolution process. It is entirely up to the supplier or landlord to decide whether to participate in the dispute resolution process and if they do participate, it is entirely up to the supplier or landlord to decide whether to agree to any settlement of that dispute. The second factor that you need to consider in deciding whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is an appropriate dispute resolution body to resolve a particular civil dispute is whether the dispute is likely to settle. This is important because the dispute resolution method that is used by Consumer Affairs Victoria to resolve disputes is conciliation. As you know, conciliation will only resolve a dispute if both parties are willing to try to reach an agreement, which will often require both parties to compromise. So, for example, a dispute might be considered unlikely to settle if the complainant, that is, the consumer or tenant, has delayed in making the complaint. This is because a significant delay may mean that evidence necessary to settle the dispute such as what was said in telephone calls, has been forgotten, or that other evidence, such as payment receipts, has been lost or destroyed. Likewise, a dispute might be considered unlikely to settle if the complainant has behaved unreasonably, for example, by rejecting a reasonable offer made by the supplier or landlord to settle the dispute. This is because unreasonable behaviour by the complainant suggests that the complainant might not be willing to compromise to settle the dispute. And finally, a dispute might be considered unlikely to settle if the other party, that is the supplier or landlord, has previously refused to participate in a conciliation conducted by Consumer Affairs Victoria. This is because the fact that the supplier or landlord has previously refused to participate in a conciliation suggests that the supplier or landlord is unlikely to cooperate in trying to settle the current dispute by conciliation. Consumer Affairs Victoria keeps a database of the parties to all disputes that have been referred to it, and so it will know whether a party has previously refused to participate in a conciliation conducted by Consumer Affairs Victoria. Having said all of this, Consumer Affairs Victoria will often refuse to intervene in a dispute unless the complainant has first tried to resolve the dispute directly with the other party. This is because it would be a waste of the time and resources of Consumer Affairs Victoria to become involved in a dispute that the parties could resolve without the assistance of Consumer Affairs Victoria. Equally, Consumer Affairs Victoria will refuse to intervene in a dispute where the dispute has already been dealt with by another dispute resolution body, such as the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal, or a court. The third and final factor that you need to consider in deciding whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is an appropriate dispute resolution body to resolve a particular civil dispute is whether or not there is a better way to resolve the dispute than using Consumer Affairs Victoria. If there's no better way of resolving the dispute, then it will be appropriate for Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist in resolving the dispute. This leads me to the first of the golden rules which you should apply in determining whether Consumer Affairs Victoria the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal or the courts are the most appropriate dispute resolution body for resolving a particular civil dispute. We'll deal with the golden rules that apply to the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal and the courts in a later video. 
However, the golden rule that applies to Consumer Affairs Victoria is that providing the dispute is within the jurisdiction of Consumer Affairs Victoria, Consumer Affairs Victoria will be the most appropriate dispute resolution body for that dispute where the parties are willing to compromise and the dispute is small and simple. As I've already explained, if Consumer Affairs Victoria does not have jurisdiction to deal with a particular dispute, then Consumer Affairs Victoria cannot possibly be an appropriate body to deal with that dispute because it has no power to deal with that dispute. Further, if either of the disputing parties, that is the consumer or the supplier or the residential tenant or the landlord, is unwilling to compromise, then Consumer Affairs Victoria will not be an appropriate body to deal with that dispute because Consumer Affairs Victoria uses conciliation as its dispute resolution method, and conciliation can only be successful if the parties are willing to try to reach an agreement. But assuming that Consumer Affairs Victoria has jurisdiction and that the parties are willing to compromise, Consumer Affairs Victoria will be the most appropriate body to deal with the dispute where the dispute is small and simple. This is because where a dispute is small, the parties will not want to spend much money and time resolving the dispute. The advantages of Consumer Affairs Victoria in this regard are that Consumer Affairs Victoria is low cost. This is for two reasons. First, the conciliation service that Consumer Affairs Victoria provides is free. Second, because Consumer Affairs Victoria's procedures are less formal than for other dispute resolution bodies, in particular the courts, the parties will feel less intimidated and will be able to represent themselves. This means that the parties can save on the cost of lawyers. Another advantage of Consumer Affairs Victoria is that it is quick. There are no backlogs and the fact that disputes can be dealt with over the telephone minimises the time that the parties need to spend in participating in the dispute resolution process. For example, they don't have to spend time travelling to a Consumer Affairs Victoria office for an in-person hearing. In addition, the fact that Consumer Affairs Victoria as a conciliator has staff who are experts in resolving disputes within its jurisdiction and who can make suggestions to the parties about how they can resolve their dispute means that it is more likely that the parties, if they are willing to compromise, can reach an agreement. And the fact that Consumer Affairs Victoria's dispute resolution proceedings are conducted in private means that it is likely to be easier for the parties to make the compromises that are necessary to reach an agreement. These features of Consumer Affairs Victoria mean that it is a particularly appropriate dispute resolution body for assisting in the resolution of more simple disputes. On the other hand, Consumer Affairs Victoria will not be the most appropriate body for resolving larger and more complex disputes. This is because where a dispute is large and complex, it is less likely that the parties will be able to agree a resolution to their dispute, but Consumer Affairs Victoria cannot make a binding decision to resolve that dispute, and the parties to a large and complex dispute will often need structured procedures to enable them to conduct their dispute more efficiently. But Consumer Affairs Victoria's procedures are less formal and so do not provide this structure. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. As a result of watching and taking notes on this video, you should now be able to do two things. First, you should be able to describe the purposes of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. And second, you should be able to discuss the appropriateness of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. As I've said, you'll be undertaking a number of learning activities in class which will also help you to achieve these learning intentions. 
Don't forget to read the pages from the textbook which are referred to on the first slide. And if you find any additional information from that reading that you think is useful, then supplement your Cornell notes with that information. Thank you for your attention.